Yes, yeah, so for those who, of you who haven't been keeping up with world news, uh, there's been a virus out there called Corona, I think. COVID-19, some people refer to it as. I always thought Corona was a drink. But um, yeah, guys, sorry we haven't been putting up a lot of videos. I've explained before that um, for Anna and me, we, we're not these great video producers. Um, we love to share with people out there and we do it when we can. Um, we've been sailing a lot uh, over the last uh, season, especially during this COVID season. We want to share the Extreme 40 with you. That's what this video is all about. Our right, guys, for folks not interested in our COVID-19 sailing update, proceed to the Extreme 40. Um, but for those of you who have been wondering, well, where's MP and what have we been doing during the whole COVID season? Um, I'll let Anna go ahead with the explanation of that. Yes, we left Langkawi on the 10th of March. Uh, destination West Sumatra from there going to uh, Chagos, Seychelles, Madagascar and completing our circumnavigation in South Africa that's that was our intention but when we arrived on the 12th of March in Shaban in northern West Sumatra it became rapidly clear that what we had intended to do was not going to be possible. We cleared into Indonesia in Shaban, but we were not allowed to land anywhere. And um, although people in Indonesia helped us with provisioning and refueling, it became clear to us that this was not sustainable in the long term. So therefore we applied to come to Australia and we got granted permission. Thank you Border Force Australia. You guys rock. And we did that before the travel ban was imposed. So it was a very rapid decision that we took because we could see very quickly that the people in Indonesia were very frightened uh, to contract the virus, which is understandable. But nevertheless, we had some great people helping us to make the journey through Indonesia, basically from the top of West Sumatra all the way to the Kai Islands where we checked out. Yeah, we had in particular the two Raymonds. We had yeah. uh, Raymond um, who owns Lombok Marina, Raymond Lafontaine. It's called Marina del Rey. Street. Sorry, uh, Marina del Rey down in Lombok. Yeah, yeah, thank you for correcting me there. And um, yeah, great guy, really looked after us uh, while we were there. But even more so, a guy called Raymond Lesmana, who was our agent in Indonesia. And guys, thank goodness for having taken on an agent in Indonesia. Uh, Raymond really, you know, he had a lot to lose, actually. Um, the whole rally that they had going through West Sumatra was cancelled. And in spite of the cancellation, Raymond kept looking after uh, his sailors. And, and honestly, he really wanted to make sure that we got through Indonesia safely. As yes. you mentioned, people really frightened. Uh, we had uh, naval vessels out with um, semi-automatic rifles telling us to move on and not be at anchor. We had people on, on one island in particular in the Telos group of islands come down and throw a lot of rocks into the water to tell us to move. Um, you know, we had these sort of things going on. It was really a tough journey and we'll do a separate video on that. I think it may be worth just doing a video mm -hmm. explaining all the stuff we're to deal with yeah. uh, in COVID-19. So basically we uh, sailed through the transition season uh, along the West Sumatran coast, which was nice, a very, very beautiful place. Beautiful. And, and I hope we will Ooh. be able to revisit mm. when all of these uh, COVID times are over. And from there, we went along the northern coast of Java, uh, the northern coast of Bali into Lombok. And then we went from there onto the Kai Islands where we checked out. That was like quite an easy journey it was okay even though there was the threat of, of fishermen piracy, yeah. uh, who were call it casual piracy they actually yeah. did hit a boat down there an Australian boat yeah. got hit and um, yeah the Navy had to actually come out and knock two uh, suspicious looking vessels off our stern we, we kind of sailed alone because we felt that in Indonesia groups of boats boats were seen as being a big threat uh, to islands 
So our recommendation to the group of boats that we were sailing with was to just split up and be a lone boat going to islands. Uh, anyway, we'll cover that in another video as mentioned. So yeah. we left from Tuol in the Kai Islands where we cleared out to begin what must be our most horrendous journey ever. Upwind sailing against the currents as well. So not just against winds that varied from 35 to 45 knots all the way down to Cairns, but also against currents of up to three, four knots. Uh, we got caught in a really bad storm as well along the way uh, between Papua New Guinea and um, Australia. Yep. A ferocious storm. I mean, uh, two uh, high ridge systems that extended up each coast of Australia and a storm that got stuck in between uh, these high systems. winds huge waves had to turn around the boat deploy warps out the back to keep it in the waves um, managed to anchor off a little um, peninsula coming out of uh, Papua um, or Papua New Guinea is that whole sort of island and um, dragging one knot speed at, at night on anchor and just letting the boat drag forever because there was nothing we could do about it definitely worth a separate video but yeah <laughs> tough 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 journey So we we arrived in Thursday Island and that was like a real milestone arriving there. We were able to refuel and reprovision uh, thanks to a friend, an Australian friend, Darren Field, who organized that for Darren. us. Mm. Thanks, Darren. Yes, and um, we weren't allowed off the boat there. No, we had to uh, anchor and sort of come stern to the refueling dock and then with ropes take the fuel nozzles and so we pull the nozzle across yeah, the water right. take fuel onto the boat yeah so we kept the community safe but we are very grateful to the people in thursday island we like put our credit card in a little waterproof bag to pay for the fuel and when the bag came back it had a bottle of wine in it ah, yeah. we were too shy to ask for a bottle of wine but we really needed it well border force actually <laughs> did our shopping right so, yes, i mean they, they brought did. all our boxes down they put a sim card into the box for us yeah, uh, yeah. MP, get into your boat. We want to keep the community safe. We're doing you a special uh, favor, I guess, you know, just as a stopover, get some supplies and keep going, mate. And Border Force were there in full force. I mean, it was serious business. We could see these guys were not going to play the fool. They were like really serious about what they were doing, but ever so professional. And that's the thing with Australia, you know, uh, guys will be friendly to you, but they're very serious about the business they do. Yeah. And um, Border Force actually put the boxes uh, of food onto the back of our solar panels here while we were inside. And then they retreated and said, OK, we can come out of the boat again and uh, then we could retrieve uh, the boxes and yeah it was all done very professionally and um, from there onwards we zigzagged uh, between the land and the reef uh, oh, around the top of cape york yeah into the into the winds into the currents yep. june july strongest uh, currents uh, and winds uh, in the year actually yeah heavy going Border Force Captain Ionos was in contact, uh, really, really good, supportive when we got into trouble off Cape Melville in 70 knot winds, uh, gave us the anchorages where they put their boats. So uh, really, mm. we have got such big thanks to Border Force, to the Water Police oh, and to amazing. Immigration for helping us to get to this beautiful place. And, and you know the Torres Strait Islanders, you know, um, all the different authorities work together to get us the permissions. 
Yeah. Uh, the Torres Straits Islanders, they had a special committee, like an internal committee yeah. that sat and gave our um, process consideration because Torres Strait is basically closed down to uh, vessels uh, plying those waters, I guess. And um, yeah, they had a special committee meeting about it and the Torres Strait Islanders agreed that MP should be allowed to restock. Uh, on this island on the way through. Uh, absolutely amazing. Thank you guys and um, definitely a separate video on this one. So we arrived here in Early Beach and uh, we are here thanks to Michelle and Gil Kach who gave us mm. their mooring whilst they're sailing up north the right way. You should be sailing north at this point in time, not social, sailing south. Social media friends again, yeah. social media friends, now real friends. Yeah. And how exciting is it to be here and have all these Australians coming to greet us and welcome us and yeah. tell us how happy they are that their beautiful country has allowed us in here. So two of the friends who came to see us two days ago were Michelle van der Swart and uh, Julian Griffith from Nusa Marine, who is a custom yacht builder. Yeah, Can well, I call him that? Yeah, Julian is, is Nusa Marine, is a serious. Uh, whoops, we're getting a rocky roly here from a fishing boat that just came past. But yeah, uh, Julian uh, from Nusa Marine is a seriously talented uh, marine engineer. He's a guy that we've been interacting with on social media for a long time. Michelle van der Swart, um, who owns this Extreme 40, um, is, is more of a sort of quiet guy on social media, if I can put it that way. He's not out there like we are probably out there on Facebook and Instagram and that sort of thing. Uh, but such an amazing person, a, a humble um, yet talented sailor, um, you know, pushing his extreme. I think it's called um, Back in Black. Back in Black. Like the ACDC song. The ACDC song, Back in Black. <laughs> and. Yeah, but I'll tell you something, uh, that boat just moves uh, and, he, and they came on to MP and invited us, Julian and Michelle were on the boat uh, inviting us to come along uh, to, to sail this boat and to experience the Extreme 40. Well, I think I'm actually really wanting to buy one of those Extreme 40s, um, actually, maybe just a little tent on the trampoline or something. But yeah, we'd be in South Africa in three or four days from Australia. <laughs> Not really, but guys, it's a super craft and, and great fun that we had. Here's the video. That's Michelle, man. And he's got an Extreme 40, which he's going to be racing, right? Yeah, that's right. And yeah. what's, what's Extreme 40 called? It's called Back in Black. Back in Black. Yeah. Good luck with the race, man. Yeah, you're going to come out? Yeah, I want to come and take a look sometime. Good. Eh? Good. <laughs> and there's Julian. Mr. Noosa Marine himself, sitting on our humble MP. I'm off on the 40 today, the Extreme 40. Very exciting stuff. I just want you to come back alive, not in a box. Whoa, how cool is that, man? Is it, is it Anna? Emma. Emma, sorry Emma, I've got an Anna. <laughs> Julian! Yes, Mike. Hey, man, good what's time. your function on the boat except looking good? <laughs> One sail, 12 knots. What's our wing? This is unbelievable, guys. The man wants me to grind. Now, I'm looking for the electric button and the electric uh, motor here. <laughs> none of that. Yeah, none of that, eh? None of that. <laughs> Welcome on the boat. Thank you very much. Good to have really you. appreciate it. Here we go, lads. Oh, yeah. Look at this, guys. <laughs> oh, look at that speed man here we go that's that's what i want to see <laughs> hanging in by his teeth <laughs> screechers up oh man we're gonna be screeching light 
winds and we're just moving, man. That's a mean machine. Unbelievable. moment you've had five races yeah. and you are number one in three that's correct these guys are good man look at the crew is this a holiday or are you guys going racing today <laughs> I like it that way you and your imagination you've got wings like an angel Just rock, we go when everyone stops, no matter what they say, we like it that way, no matter what they say, we like it that way, and we dance like we're on fire, when we sing, we sing too loud, but we always find our way when we walk against the crowd.
It could be Australia's only regatta this year and its 64 crews made sure it would go down in the history books. Yeah, there's a few numbers less but the competition is hot. The Extreme 40 back in black clinging to multi-hole bragging rights by just one point. Their biggest rivals, almost 60, were hot on their heels. No real pressure more than any other day. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to win regardless so yeah, we're going to go and give it a red hot shot. The 32nd race week has been one to remember. Aside from COVID-19 complications, organisers have also had to adapt to calm conditions, saying the lack of windy weather hasn't been this consistent in a decade. The final day was almost called off completely with all but six knots of wind, which created a challenge of its own. It um, really makes you focus on your manoeuvres and getting them spot on correct as fast as you possibly can. Every second that you waste in a light wind day like today is really, really hard to pick up at the other end of the day. So after a delayed start, the flag was finally lowered. It was a shortened windward course to sail home. You put the best crew on you can and, and race the clock as hard as you can every day. It's nail biting regardless of the speed of the boat and how windy it is. Queensland crew back in black and local steering almost 60 finish the series on equal points. We sail the boat quite fast as well. We push it to its limits, especially on the windier days. Um, and yeah, we just send it. The final decision on a count back saw almost 60 secure line honours. Charmaine Nifsid, 7 News. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed our video. We are so happy to be with great Australians here in this beautiful land down under. Anna is busy trying to help ramp up the animal welfare program in New Caledonia. Please check out our description for the links to this. Our son Terry is a broker selling yachts at Just Catamarans. That's a company which belongs to my cousin Kent uh, out of Florida. We ask no compensation for our videos, so giving our son Terry Grimbeck a bit of a plug here. Please check out Just Catamarans. I also like to encourage sailing folks growing their channel. I chat to quite a few of these people. Check out our South African mates on Sailing Sisu, Frick and Pedro. They have a great channel and they are really trying to grow it. People ask us what uh, the top sort of channels are we enjoy watching. Well, we don't really get much time to watch them, but definitely Gone With The Winds and La Vagabond come to mind. For our channel, well, we are not about the numbers, but we really love the interaction with you guys. 
So don't be shy, hit the subscribe and bell button and share the love with us. Cheers everyone, MP out.